Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Thursday, March 14, 2024, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We're having a reverse aging health call tomorrow night, Friday, the uh, 15th around 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to talk about this new introduction to the youth formulations. Maybe you've thought about this, but one of the greatest accomplishments we can make in a lifetime is to never take anyone or anything for granted. It's kind of like our lives are always balancing on the edge of a thin dime. And everything can be taken away in a flash. Anyway, see, and a lot of people, some people kind of understand that. I mean, and then some people don't. It's like when you've experienced everything is can be taken in a flash more than once. You really experience, you really understand it. And it also teaches you that nothing is permanent. You learn that. You know, some people don't learn it. Yeah, maybe on a Maybe different perspectives they do. Uh, you know, you could sit there and say, you know, anything could be gone and, and just disappear. Be, you could lose it all or have it be gone. And you can say that, but have you ever experienced it? Even on a small level where, you know, you had something and boom, gone. Why do we take nothing and no one for granted? Interesting, isn't it? Because they could be gone. Have you ever talked with someone and the next day they're gone? They've left the body. And they no one, you had no idea, not a clue, that they would leave the body. I have found myself... In conversation with those that, you know, you <laughs> you have conversations and interactions, and then the next thing you know, they're gone. Not a clear blow. They've left the body. And as you know, I've experienced that just recently with two people uh, that were on our think tank team for our technologies. And this even enforces it, it. It strengthens even more the understanding that that's why we take nothing for granted ever, ever. No matter how small or minuscule it may seem to you, uh, you are grateful for it. It's essential for us to consist, consistently practice appreciation for what we have and express this loving communication with everyone in our world. We must choose to become appreciation experts. Remaining positive and supportive with those we care deeply about and cherish. When times are good, or let's just say times are cold and dark for friends and family, it's our job to give them the best love we can give. We may not realize it now, yet the love that we share ends up being the same love we will have to give back to ourselves when our life feels like it's coming to an end. During this precious life, 
we are guaranteed the most outrageous climax when it's all over. We can enjoy the journey much more if we learn one small skill to stop holding on to our past pain. I believe that that is one of the biggest deficits or burdens that this civilization carries is that we hold on to our past pain way too long. The negative voices, the arguments, the criticisms and fault finding must for all of us be released if we are going to find emotionally neutral terms within ourselves. See, a lot of people will carry this, their prerogative, they carry it they don't know they're carrying it. They have no idea. Now, there's times where they might feel heavy or tired or frustrated. But, you know, in order for us to do this, we must choose to practice grabbing hold of the reins of our mind, train it to obey our every wish and desire. And we must choose to show the mind that we are the boss and main authority in charge to be respected, not trampled on, not ridiculed, not filled with doubt and guilt, when the mind wanders down that deep, dark, and lonely alley towards fear, we simply give it a little kick and turn up the love and inner light inside our heart. Our mind is the designer and creator of our entire life. And only when it's focused in a positive, healthy direction are we then destined to manifest truly wonderful things. Observe and know that what you see is the wheel of maya. Maya meaning mind. Moving round and round, always changing, never stopping for a moment. Know this. Know that there can be no failure. Know this and understand that your emotions are but dancing chemicals of up and down on and off, temporary and impermanent. There is no failure if one lives in truth, simplicity, love. Do not feel embarrassed, for you have not failed. You do not know the final outcome. Be in the present. Live in the present. That is all one can do. Babaji. It's a great quote. Now, you may found, find, you know, really refreshing, something that you come across is that there is a natural healing mechanism installed in the software of our DNA, which pushes us in the direction of constant growth, healing, and survival. Our physical bodies are designed to automatically heal any cuts or bruises that we have. Our minds over time tend to naturally forget and diminish mental and emotional wounds from our past. Unless we tend to keep reenacting and playing out those negative emotional states, they will naturally heal on their own accord. When we are left alone out in nature in a safe, quiet environment, without any media or social contact with society, taking in only healing positive information, eating only clean, raw, organic food, in a matter of 90 days or less, all of our mental, emotional, and even physical problems will all be gone. It is simply nature at work within our DNA, which knows how to naturally replenish, restore, and return the body-mind mechanism back to its natural state. It's like the tiny mustard seed already knows how to establish roots. 
grow up against gravity, reach towards the sun, one day bear fruit and seeds for future generations. Our DNA was designed with this effortless program to heal our entire mind-body organism. Since many of us cannot afford to pack up and leave our lives for several months at a time, we must choose to perpetually think positively about ourselves, our lives, and future. You might hear this constant subtle war inside ourselves in the form of an attempt to focus and refocus the mind in a positive, creative direction. Past subconscious wounding keeps bubbling up until it is healed. And we are like sponges who are absorbing negative thinking patterns that we unknowingly don't see spewing from others around us. It is the law of this universe, garbage in and garbage out. We cannot afford to dwell in any negative thought patterns as they all will manifest somewhere in our health, in our relationships, in our finances. By simply bringing awareness to only having sacred, empowering, positive healing thoughts perpetually flowing in, we must have sacred healing experiences coming out. When I look inside and I see that I am nothing, that is wisdom. When I look outside and see that I am everything, that is love. And between these two, my life turns, as Rigadada Maharaj. Do you believe that you can discover new oceans if you don't lose sight of the shore? There truly are no words that can fully describe the enlightened state of consciousness by itself. See, our spiritual journey is for us to discover that we are enlightened beings already we forgot we have amnesia we are enlightened beings so part of this endless journey is to rediscover that so it is an enlightened experience that is beyond the mind and all mental concepts. We can only know that we've had a taste of it by the enhanced quality of our life experience. Our typical normal walk in the park becomes a romantic rendezvous with the divine. We are greeted with personal messages and sacred signs of inner guidance on every street corner and billboard that we see. When the state of enlightened consciousness shows up, it turns the mundane into the miraculous. This is where this civilization is moving into. This is the spiritual realignment of this civilization. such as perpetual and effortless reverence for this life. In the enlightened state, we cannot help but feel totally in awe of life. We are, we are seeing a divine intelligence is deeply rooted and alive in all things, objects, situations, and people. It is obvious that there is a higher intelligence behind every experience, action, and occurrence. We see there's no such thing as a coincidence, and we live in constant reverence for this life, participating with ease in the natural flow and celebrating in this spiritual connection that's all around us. Isn't it interesting or ironic that it's all around us, and yet 
We don't know it. Observing the mirror reflection within every interaction. This is where we start to understand when the state of enlightened awareness is super strong within us, we stop identifying with our physical body as who we are. We instead see our inner nature is everywhere in all things and people. We see it is the background, backdrop and blackboard of that entire universe is written upon. We know we are the universal body and find every human being as a glimmering facet reflecting this unique individuated point of consciousness within ourselves. The mirror ignites a natural realization that everyone is our teacher, pointing us back to us the lessons and messages we most need to hear. The enlightened awareness shows us that we are not separate from anyone and anything, and we effortlessly live in a state of joy and universal harmony wherever we go. Feeling of being deeply settled and completely still inside. When was the last time you felt that? The feeling of being deeply settled and completely still inside. No matter what chaos is occurring in the outer world, there is always a point of perpetual stillness at our core. We are the center of the cyclone that no drama, violence, or death can threaten. We know our true nature is eternal and that nothing can destroy us. We are rooted within this moment so deeply that nothing can shake us or disturb our inner peace. We laugh with lightness at the trivial stresses that used to plague our daily mind as we relax deeper into the recesses of our innermost being. Have you ever had a deep knowing that all is perfect in this life? There is a natural understanding that all is well and unfolding exactly as it should. We see the universal perfection that is here now and accept that it has the highest vision in sight of how life should be. We stop fighting with others outside ourselves because the fight has stopped within ourselves. That's when we stop fighting. We are the source of nonviolence attacking and judging nothing we see within. There is only a respect for the perfection that is constantly unfolding around us, knowing the mind can have its fabrications about how things should be, yet abide instead in the deeper resources of peace that know otherwise. How to reach this state of consciousness? It's vital to know that it is available to all of us at all times and perpetually lies dormant at the core of our being. The more we rest within ourselves in a life free from stress, desire, and activity, the more we relax inside and soon realize it's astounding power. And as this brilliant gateway is gradually opened, we see how easy it is to create anything and everything that we desire. Our normal awareness pierces like a laser beam through the negative beliefs which normally would have stopped us from moving forward. And we see how fun and easy it is to accept the possibility of instant 
manifestation. The more often we sit still, practice quieting the mind, watching the breath rise and fall, doing nothing, the more we, the divine consciousness, awakens within us. When we stop and meditate on the source of consciousness itself, we discover that it's everywhere we are. It is our very nature and is as bright and brilliant as the sun. It is so obvious that it cannot be missed. When we catch hold of it and let go of our attachment to the outer phenomenal world, we see that this consciousness has a power which is so all-encompassing that we stop looking outside of ourselves for answers and start listening to the omniscient wisdom that is constantly bubbling up from within our core. Quote from Nisargadatta, look at your mind dispassionately. This is enough to comment. When it is quiet, you can go beyond it. Do not keep it busy all the time. Stop it and just be. You give it a rest, it will settle down and recover its purity, strength. Constant thinking makes it decay. With the enlightened state, we can live a life that is free from doubt, free from fear. Because we know that something universally intelligent is guiding us each step of the way. We are never bored with this life, nor seeking gratification from our outer world. Because ordinary life situations are constantly transformed into a deeply ecstatic spiritually awakening moments. There is no attachment to our lives, to desires, to possessing anything, acquiring anything, nor escaping from any experience. We meet our lives full on, embracing the divine circumstances that we are given, facing them with complete ecstasy, because we have already found what we were searching for our entire lives. We've discovered an eternal source of peace within that cannot be shaken or disturbed by anything or anyone in the outer world. The greatest secret to finding the state of enlightened consciousness is when we get in touch with our deepest personal Trauma? And emotional pain. Our pain is there for a very profound spiritual reason. It pushes us to reach for the divine. We need a propulsion fuel so deep and powerful that it launches us directly into real spiritual awareness. We are so deeply asleep to our all-powerful, infinite nature on a day-to-day basis that the only thing strong enough to break through this veil is a burning desire to be free from our suffering. It is our deepest pain that liberates us, and feeling into it daily will pave the path to our highest freedom. When we get a taste of enlightened consciousness, everything changes. We see everything as a spiritual experience. We see our mind instantly stops judging the world, ourselves, and our lives as we recognize the source of real peace here, now. We live in this world, yet truly beyond the judgments of this world. 
This non-judgmental approach liberates our energy to relax into the infinite healing presence of our being. This is how we attain the initial taste of our unbounded freedom. It all begins with a simple connection with our own awareness and consciousness. We drop into what is aware, what is present, what is watching the watcher, who is observing this experience of life, we open the doors to 100% pure awareness, free from the mind. By reopening this door again and again and again, we soon discover the highest, most deeply eternal loving state, blissful state of experience a human being can attain. As Osho quoted, outer circumstances don't need so much effort to be changed, but the inner lethargy is centuries old. The unconsciousness is so primitive, its roots are so deep, that it needs a total determination on your part, a tremendous determination, a commitment, a deep involvement. You have to risk it all. Unless that happens, it is impossible to change yourself. You will remain the same. It truly depends on where we are currently at in our inner journey as to how many days, months, or years it will take before we discover our natural enlightened state. The more often we can practice resting in deep states of stillness, completely dropping all mind chatter, the faster the enlightened state will arrive at our doorstep. Ultimately, it is the commitment to ourselves that sparks the evolution to finding higher consciousness. When we are truly committed to unveiling our infinite spiritual nature, diving deeper each day into the discovery of who we truly are, it is only a short matter of time before the universe delivers us to this ultimate enlightened state of being. Knowing that which will totally satisfy our hearts and fulfill every yearning within our soul is not a small matter. When it comes down to it, the level of devotion we have to finding real freedom, the enlightened state, is a reflection of how much we actually love ourselves. This life is a test of our depth of self-love. The level of enlightenment we experience along the way determines how often and quickly we can summon the quality of unstoppable inner peace, creativity, or compassion for others. The enlightened state is the base factor that determines how successful we are on our spiritual path and the main reason and purpose why we are all here. It is only through the infinite exploration of our inner journey that we can experience a real sense of freedom in our lives. It is an ironic thing, yet in the enlightened state we see that everyone is enlightened except ourselves. We realize that there truly is no self, and thus there is no more suffering. It may be hard or difficult to comprehend because we are so accustomed to being identified with this mind, ego, and body. Yet the more we realize our true nature, the more we discover a life that is free from any form of pain. This freedom 
is the great spiritual peak that we are each here to climb and conquer. Every great work, every great accomplishment has been brought into manifestation through holding to the vision. And often, just before the big achievement comes, apparent failure and discouragement. Florence Goldberg Finn. You ever done that? Have you ever had something that was coming in? And just, just before it comes in, this big achievement comes, it seems like something comes in, it's like failure and disappointment and dust. You ever had that? One personal word of advice for you on your journey is to be patient with yourself as there are a thousand brilliant obstacles along the way on this great journey. The difference between illusion and reality is really, really, really thin and will create many veils between the mind and your consciousness. You may forget many times that the highest state of freedom is here, available, right now, waiting for you. It is like Mount Everest, always there, yet often hidden behind the clouds. Very few have the courage to even attempt to climb. So don't give up if you don't arrive on your first or hundredth crack at it. There will always be another moment in the future or perhaps another lifetime when you will have more desire, courage, trust, faith, and a fierce penetrating laser-like awareness to burn through the cloudy veils of the mind. Great quote from Oscar Wilde, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. Whether we realize this or not, many don't. This life is always teaching us what we most need to know. Now, the ego mind will argue with that until you're blue in the face. Sometimes it provides us with negative experiences so that we learn how to deepen, soften, and let go. While other times we receive positive experiences... So remember how sacred every breath and heartbeat truly are. Now, when we look closely at our lives, we will notice that there is and has always been a constant swinging from a positive to a negative life. Experience. And then back again. It's like a pendulum on a clock, you know. It's just this eternal pendulum swing is there for one very divine reason. So that you learn how to be free from both extremes and are forced to discover the deeply creative, all-powerful, manifesting being you truly are. Now, as we naturally grow and mature in this life, for the most part, we realize that our problems cannot be solved by changing the outer world. We see that our real issues shift by diving into our inner world, reaching towards our true center, where we can clearly see how each problem is an opportunity for greater enlightenment and transformation. Now, all of us 
agreed with ourselves at one time to ascend into higher levels of consciousness. When we accept this as truth, we can let go of playing the role of the hero, victim, or perpetrator in our lives. This enables us to truly enjoy the natural swing of life's pendulum. We can fall deeper into this enjoyment as long as we continue to breathe. The more deeply we breathe, the more we drop our mind chatter and the easier it is to connect with the divine consciousness at the center of our being. It is here that we find our real power to choose how we wish to relate and respond to each pendulum point. We can sit back and observe how our mind may try to control the pendulum, avoid it, ignore it, or simply accept it is happening. When we surrender and accept it, we can decide to transcend it completely. Then we are no longer slaves to the good and bad occurrences of this crazy world. Only abiding at the center of our being can we remember that we are the ultimate authority of our reality. This is where our true freedom is. And it becomes obvious that we manifest, what we manifest, is purely determined by where and what we are focusing our attention on. To find everlasting peace with the pendulum, we must learn to trust in it. Life has scheduled in these pivotal extremes so that we Stop clinging to it, to it all, and learn how to see the grand unfoldment of our soul's journey. Every high and low extreme is designed to crack our hearts and minds wide open so that we surrender to our highest power and know without a doubt that it's possible to manifest anything we want. The great pendulum swing summons our soul to reach all the way inwards until we are living and breathing a spiritual life. We really don't want anything less than this. We want it all. It is from rooting ourselves in our spiritual journey that our consciousness blossoms, making each day more amazing than the last. The real growth of our spiritual path in this life comes from feeling into what's uncomfortable. Our pain pushes us to reach deeper inside so we are beyond the reach of the pendulum swing and find the silent stillness that is unmoving at the core of our being. This stillness is our real teacher in this life. 
it shows us that happiness is not all about getting what we think we want. It's not about controlling the low swing, remaining in the middle, or staying at the high point. Real happiness comes from knowing we are already truly free. We are free from the ever-changing pendulum and whatever painful extreme it may move into. This freedom feeling is like taking a bath in the internal, eternal fountain of youth where we naturally recognize our true enlightened nature that always was and will always be beyond it all. It's good to know that we were born to experience an initial clinging to this life, yet we were not meant to hold on to this clinging forever. If we are getting wrapped up in the drama of our lives, trapped in a negative emotion or heavy thought pattern, we are just overly identified with our mind. We have forgotten we are more than just a body and ego identity. We are an eternal soul that will never live, that will live forever. This world is made of energy, information, and intelligence that is always changing. Whenever we get stuck, fixated, or hooked on any one thing, idea, or expectation, we get hooked into the illusion. And this adds extra weight to our pendulum. Our pendulum becomes spring-loaded. And when we hit an extreme, it then catapults us back to the opposite direction to reach an even further extreme. And the only way to transcend this perpetual intensity and annoying repetition is to return to the stillness at the center that is at our core, beyond the mind. When we drop deep inside and become super vigilant with our thoughts, we will be able to see and feel the pendulum swing coming before it actually happens. We notice the mind's preference towards having to have only a positive experience and not a negative one. Again, the more attached we become to the more we suffer in the swing. The next time this occurs, do become aware of the experience without becoming identified with the experience. For example, the mind might say, ah, because this is manifested now, my life is truly good, or since this just happened now, my life is horrible. This is how the mind gets hooked by the play of life and the divine pendulum swing. Do not get hooked by the judgmental mind. Instead, just notice what was it that hooked you and trust the momentum will soon swing in the opposite direction the very moment you relax breathe and let go join me in the meditation I'll return to close this out
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. An easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. There's an infinite power inside you. You can manifest anything you desire. You are fully capable of doing, having, and creating whatever your heart desires. You are destined to manifest a miraculous life that you love. You are a deeply and eternally loved one. Take this with you for the rest of the day and the evening and night and the following morning. And we will return here Friday, March 15th, 2024, the left at 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. And around 9 p.m. Eastern to continue our reverse aging health call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, and purest of the purest purest, eternal gratitude at all times, no matter what's happening outside of you or within you.